All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. As always, if you learned something, go ahead, hit that like button, leave a comment, and make sure you ring the bell so you get a notification when I drop a new video. Uh, today, we are in Excel, and let's talk about dynamic dependent dropdown. So I recently had to perform this on a work product, and I didn't see any videos on this particular approach. So there are many ways to perform this. I think this is the quickest and easiest way, in my opinion. Let me just show you what I'm gonna show you. So I've got the NBA 75th anniversary team. So I have a number of players here, and we have their respective positions. So if I come over here, I've got data validation, so I can select a position. So let's say center. And when I select uh, this uh, drop down. These are all centers, so it's dependent upon the position that is in this uh, this first drop down. So we'll go with uh, David Robinson here. So this isn't my first team all smoke. Uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that in a separate uh, video here, but I'm just picking, I'm just showing you. So this is a center forward, someone who's primarily a center, but played forward, but we're just gonna go down to forwards here and we'll pick Carmelo, shout out to uh, Syracuse. We'll pick another forward. We're building the lineup here, but you can see, we'll go with Barkley here. You'll see as I change this, the value in this cell, my values in this dependent cell also change, right? So just showing you, uh, you may have a use for this, right? So I had to use this on a, a work product. You know, again, I, di I didn't see a particular video on this approach, but I'm gonna show you how to set this up. Okay, so in order for this approach to work, our data table must be sorted by uh, our first level dropdown. So if our first level dropdown is going to be position, then our data table has to be sorted by position, which you can see it is. All the positions are in order. So again, your table has to be sorted by your first level dropdown in order for this to work. So instead of just showing you a long function without explanation, we're gonna break this section down into its component functions first so it makes sense. So this approach requires three functions in order to work. The, and I'll scroll down here, the match function, the count if function, and the offset function. So offset needs an anchor cell a starting position and an ending position. And so we'll use match for our starting position. We'll use count if for our ending position. So we're gonna to put together, I'm gonna to show you how all three of these functions come together to give us our dynamic uh, dropdown. But I wanted to show you manually hard coded first and then we'll build out kind of the dynamic solution. Okay, let's start with match. Like I said, we're gonna use match to determine our starting a point, so I'm gonna go match, right? What's our lookup value? So I put C uh, here in the position, so we wanna look up C, and then where do we want to look it up? We want to look it up within this uh, position column here. So I'm gonna highlight all of those. I'm gonna hit function F4, so I get those uh, locked in with the dollar signs, and then I want an exact match, and so when I close that up, you'll see I return a one. So basically what this saying is saying is, I find the center position in the first position of the range that I selected. So that's how I get my one. So now let's move over to uh, count if. Okay, now with respect to count if, we use count if to count the number of cells that meet a specified criterion. So in our example, we wanna count the number of times a position appears in our player list. So in the simplest form, count if says, where do you wanna look? What do you wanna look for? And I'm gonna tell you how many times uh, it appears. So let's go over here to count if, we'll go equal count, whoops, if I could spell, count if, open that up. All right, where do you wanna look? So I want to look here, right? So I'm gonna highlight all of this, right? Again, my function F4 to lock those in. Now, what do you wanna look for? Well, I wanna look for the center position. So it's gonna tell me, tell me how many times C is in that list, 14. So my match tells me C starts at position one, count if tells me um, C shows up 14 times. So that gives me my range. So I'll use offset now, right? I'll use offset to get all of the players 
that are respective to the center position. So we'll use offset here. Now offset allows us to return a single cell, right? Or a range of cells. And I can specify the number of rows and number of columns to be returned, right? So what offset needs is an anchor point. So let's do this, offset. Now I need an anchor point or a reference. So that is going to be this cell uh, right here, sorry. It's gonna be this cell right here for the player because I'm gonna, I want to return all the respective players in the range that uh, I have laid out with the match and count if. So I could do offset, watch this, rows. Well, we've already determined what our starting uh, position is, right? Uh, we wanna start in the first position here. And then I'm going to say, I don't need columns on the height, I want 14, and then I can just close this up. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna give me all of the centers because I specified that in the match uh, in the count if. So if you look offset, starting with this anchor point right here, right, that player, so go one position in from the start and go 14 position. So I have all of the players associated with the center position. So now all we have to do, let's go ahead and build out the, uh, the full solution here. Okay, so now that we know how match, count if, and offset work, right? Let's go ahead and cook with these three functions. So what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and do a, a data validation here so we get our drop down. So that's, that's fairly simple to do. What I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and highlight all of this. Let's go over here to the data validation and we want a list and it's gonna ask us what's the source and the source is going to be all of this right here. And I'm gonna hit okay. And then, so now I should have, you'll see uh, the distinct values for those positions in all of these cells, so that's good. So now we need to set up the dependent dropdown so I get the specific names that correspond to this uh, position. Okay, so now we're going to put in our respective uh, player names for each position. And so let me go down here and I'm just going to paste in right, just so you can see the full function, right, that we're gonna paste into the validation. So all I did was show you, like we use the offset, and H5 is going to be, again, uh, that is our anchor point, essentially, for returning the player name. So now, instead of hard coding in a one, right, we're gonna use that match function that we used before to determine the first appearance of the position, so C starts at one. We're gonna skip ahead here to count if. So now, uh, because it's reference, rows, columns, and height. So we have a reference, we have rows, we don't need any columns, we're going to height. So count if uh, is acting as our dynamic height. So instead of typing in 14, we're using that uh, the count if function that we had here, which was, hey, let's look in this position column and let's find C and it's gonna return 14. So I just wanted to show you like this, you know, pause it and look at this, you know, function, get a feel for this. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that and I'm going to copy that into the data validation over here. So if I go data validation, actually, let me highlight all of these. Now go to data validation. I'm gonna select my list here, and then I'm gonna paste in the function that I showed you. And if we go over here, we can see that that is the case, say okay. So now when I have a C here, I should get all of my centers, right? And if I change this to, let's say a guard, I should get my guards here. So now I'm gonna show you what my third team all smoke is, and then I'll show you my second team all smoke as well. Stick around. Okay, from the NBA 75th anniversary team, top 75, this is my third team all smoke for the greatest players uh, of all time here. Again, my third team. So we're gonna go with, uh, at center, we're going to go with uh, Wilt Chamberlain, toss up between him and who I'm gonna pick in the second team. At uh, guard, we're gonna go with Oscar uh, Robertson here. 
And then at my other guard, we're going to go with, from the bad boys, we got to go with uh, Isaiah. Respect to those uh, Pistons teams that battled it out with my Lakers back in the day. Uh, We're going to go with another (laughs) gentleman that battled it out with my Lakers. We're going to go with Larry Legend at the forward. And then I'm going to take forward center here because he played a little center. We're going to go with the big ticket, Kevin Garnett. So that's my third team, all smoke. Okay, second team, all smoke. Um, at the center, we're going to go with, we're going to go with Shaq, you know, I watched Shaq play back in the day and he was a monster in his prime. Uh, we're going to go with uh, Shaq and Kobe here. Uh, you can't go wrong with that combination. Then we're going to throw in, I'm going to mix it up a little bit. We're going to throw in Steph here at the other guard for forward. We got to go with Barkley, man. If you've seen Barkley play back in the, the 80s and 90s, he was a beast. And then also got to go with Carl Malone. So that is my second team, All Smoke. If you want to see what my first team, All Smoke, is, I'm going to put uh, just a quick short in the, uh, the members only section. I'll run down my first team, All Smoke. Who is your first team all time NBA starters? Let me know in the comments. And so, anyway, this has been Anthony Smoke. Hope you enjoyed this tip and you learned about dynamic dependent drop downs in Excel using indirect, using offset and count if. Take this tip, get out there, do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching, everyone.